friends, it's Jill here with the Hometown Homestead and today we're in the kitchen for a family favorite. It is a sourdough cinnamon bun and this is actually gonna be an adaptation from the King Arthur recipe. So you can find that there, I will put it in the links. But I'm gonna make this one with a freshly milled wheat that I made here at home. So if you're interested in either freshly milled or the regular, stay put because this recipe is far and away a family favorite here at our house. Now, one thing I do wanna talk about before we get started is that we're actually gonna put all of our wet ingredients into the bowl of the mixer before we add any of the dry ingredients. And I know some recipes have this done in the opposite way, but when you do it this way, it actually ensures that you don't have any dry flour left in the bottom and it doesn't change anything about the recipe itself. So everything wet is gonna go in and then we're gonna add our dry. I'm gonna bring you down low so you can see exactly what's going in the pot. So to my mixing bowl, I'm adding one cup of sourdough starter. This is fed, mine is actually slightly past its peak because I let it rise overnight. Three quarters cup of lukewarm milk. One large egg a quarter cup of sugar, and four teaspoons of softened butter. And I forgot to leave mine out, so this is a little more than softened. I actually put it in my air fryer to warm it up just slightly, and some of it's melted, but it's gonna work out just fine. Okay, so back here at the mixer, I'm gonna give these ingredients a quick stir before I start to add in my flour, just to get them incorporated ever so slightly before we get going. Now I'm gonna add three and a quarter cups of my all-purpose flour blend that I made out of my freshly milled wheat. My all-purpose blend is three parts hard white to one part hard red and two parts soft white. Now sometimes I play around with that a little bit, but I was having a hard time getting um, freshly milled recipes to turn out like I wanted really easily. And I decided if I wanted to be able to make recipes that were similar to regular with my freshly milled wheat, maybe the option was just to make my own freshly milled recipe. So that's what we've done there. And I will put the directions to that down at the bottom. Now I'm just mixing this until it gets to be a sticky, tacky mess, a couple minutes. Now that I have my dough mixed into a nice ball, I'm gonna add a teaspoon and a half of salt right on top, as well as a teaspoon of yeast. So now that the salt and yeast is on my dough, we're gonna put the lid on, let this set for 20 minutes, and come back for next steps. Our 20 minute rest is up and now we're gonna go ahead and mix the same exact blend until it's soft and supple and a little bit stretchy. This should take just a couple of minutes. Now we have a beautifully mixed ball of dough and we are gonna put the lid on this and let it rest for four hours. Once an hour, we're gonna come back and do a stretch and fold and just turn around the bowl one time. And that's really gonna help to develop a nice, beautiful roll at the end. So put a lid on it, set it in a warm place around 75 degrees, and then hourly come back for that stretch and fold. The initial hour is over and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do my first set of stretch and folds on this dough. I did go ahead and move it into a glass bowl because the bowl I had it in wasn't really allowing me to be able to show you very well exactly how we get this done. I actually just give it a little bit of a pull and a shake, fold it, give my bowl a turn, and go all the way around. So I'm gonna do this four times before allowing it to set for another hour to proof. I'm gonna complete two more rounds of stretch and folds just like this, another hour apart, and then I'll meet you back after this is complete. Now my house is a little bit cold today, so I'm actually letting this proof in my oven with the light on, just to give it a little bit of added warmth to make sure that the dough is in that optimal range of 75 degrees to keep it moving along at the right process. So after a couple more rounds of stretch and folds, I'll be back to show you what we're gonna do next. 
Okay, now it's time to put together the filling. And the first time I made this recipe, I couldn't believe how dry the filling actually was in comparison to the filling that I was used to using. So I wanna show you exactly how you go about putting it together. I have one tablespoon of melted butter in a very hot bowl, and I should have been a little more careful with that. And to that, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of flour, just regular all-purpose, which is my home ground, of course. And in effort to cut down on my dirty measuring cups, I use the same cup for my one quarter cup flour and for my three quarters cups of brown sugar. So I have three quarters cups packed brown sugar underneath going into my bowl, one tablespoon of cinnamon and an eighth teaspoon of salt. So now that I have all of the ingredients in my bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and get it stirred up. This is gonna have somewhat of a sandy type consistency. It's not gooey and sticky at all like most other um, cinnamon roll ingredients that I've put together before. So this is a really dry mixture and it's dry on purpose. Just know that that one tablespoon of butter is enough. It helps to make the process of putting this dough together and rolling these up a lot cleaner than I was used to for sure. So this is what it should look like. Sandy and gorgeous just like that. So we're gonna set it to the side while we roll out the dough. Now to get the dough rolled out, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly flour my work surface. I'm just gonna use my countertop here. And we wanna roll this out to be about 18 to 20 inches long and about 14 inches wide. I'm gonna take my beautiful soft dough here and throw it down on the surface, putting just a little bit of flour on top before we start getting it rolled out. We're gonna go ahead and put our mixture right on top. We've got a baby basketball game going on in the other room. So lots of giggles and squiggles going on in the background. But that's just literally how life goes in my house. Now the goal here is to put the cinnamon and sugar about a half inch away from the edge on the side closest to the end. And I'll bring that down just a little bit because you wanna be able to have room to seal it up. Everywhere else, it can go all the way out because you wanna make sure your flavor is even throughout all of the cinnamon rolls. All you need to do is start rolling from your end where you've sealed all the way down and it actually goes together so beautifully. And tuck it in as tight as you can get it. As you roll right on down. Once you get to the end down here, you wanna pull up your free edge and seal it back so that you can keep as much of that yummy goodness inside as possible. Now, is it a big deal? <laughs> is it a big deal if some of it spills out? Of course not. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just use a sharp bread knife to make this into 12 different rolls. And what I found when cutting is that you really don't need any pressure at all. The knife will do all the work if you let it. So this dough really cuts exceptionally well. If you wanna take dental floss and cut these, you can. It really isn't necessary if you have a good bread knife at your disposal. I start off by cutting my roll into fourths. And then I cut each piece into thirds. And this allows me to get the sizing really symmetrical. Now that the cutting is complete, you can see how beautiful these turn out. You have two options on how to proceed after you put the rolls in the pan. You can either let them rise for an hour and bake them right away, or you can put them in the refrigerator and bake them the next morning. Now they're all set up in the pan and ready to go. You do wanna make sure to get a cover on them. Now my baking pan actually has a lid with it, but if you don't have a lid for yours, cling wrap would work as well. After a night in the refrigerator, I pulled my rolls out this morning and set them out on the stove so they could warm up and come to temperature and do some rising while we headed off to church. Now that they've had time to rise, they look fabulous and are ready to go in the oven. There's a little bit of carameling starting to happen in the bottom of the pan just from the brown sugar and the melted butter coming out of the rolls, but that is just fine. 
It'll add to the flavor and create a nice little ooey gooey texture at the bottom when they come out of the oven. So right now I'm gonna throw these in a 400 degree oven. I'm gonna watch them probably around 18 to 22 minutes. We'll see how long it takes them to cook and I'll bring you back when they're done. And while they're in, we're gonna go ahead and put together the icing that's gonna go on top, which will be the beautiful finishing touch that we've been waiting for. Now throwing together our quick icing here, I have a cup and a half of powdered sugar, a little over a tablespoon of butter. We're gonna put in a teaspoon of vanilla or more. <laughs> Make that what works for your house. A little bit of salt. Now this is optional, so it's up to you. A recipe says 1 16th of a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir before adding in enough milk to make it work. Now you could substitute water here, but one to two tablespoons of milk should make this come together in a beautiful icing that will be perfect for the top of those gorgeous cinnamon rolls that I hear beeping right now coming out of the oven. Five minutes has passed and these beautiful cinnamon rolls are out of the oven and ready to get some icing. Now there's a couple options here. You can let them cool for 10 minutes or so so the icing doesn't slide off as much and you can even leave them uniced waiting to be iced whenever you're ready to eat them. Simply pop the rolls in the microwave or in the toaster oven, get them warm and then dollop your icing on top for just specific icing of whichever cinnamon rolls you like to ice. For my crew, we're just gonna put this all over the top and then they'll be ready to eat. So now we have a pan of beautiful cinnamon rolls iced and ready to go. Now we're gonna eat these hot, but it's up to you on how you wanna do it. Now these cinnamon rolls won't last a day in my house, so I'm not gonna really worry about how to store them. But for you, if you wanted to store these and eat them over the next couple days, just put the lid on them and put them in the refrigerator. You can pull them out and microwave them and they will make a deliciously warm treat any day that you're ready to eat them. If you're curious on more details of my specific blend for my all-purpose freshly milled wheat, make sure to check the description box below. And if you're interested in more recipes using freshly milled wheat and sourdough, make sure to subscribe because you never know what's going to come out of our kitchen. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you have a fabulous day. Enjoy yourself a cinnamon roll and we'll see you back soon. Bye friends.